Hi, I'm Shiv Aglani. Thanks for checking out our Raise the Line interview series in which me and my co-host, Osmosis Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Rishi Desai, explore how to strengthen our healthcare system with some amazing leaders in medicine, technology, education, and government. And they have some great advice for people starting careers in healthcare as well. I hope you'll watch these highlights and then go listen to the full podcast interview wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Shiv Gulani, and today on Raise the Line, I'm really happy to be joined by one of my oldest friends, Dr. Atul Nakasi. Atul is a physician and policy advisor at the Los Angeles County Department of Health, which is the second largest public health system in the United States. He works with the underserved communities of Watson Compton at a government-run public clinic and advises on legislative matters related to Medicaid and health coverage for low-income and disabled populations. So, so going back to Hopkins Med, I remember one of the enterprising things you did was you started this uh, Distinguished Speaker Series. One of the first uh, lecturers you brought was Dr. Anthony Fauci. Um, who uh, w- was obviously very famous even back then, but clearly this year has has skyrocketed him to a whole new level of, uh, of fame uh, and influence. Could you tell us a bit more about uh, how you identified him back then and what the process was like and how he is as a person? Anthony Fauci had been so well known in the worlds of infectious disease and medicine, but you're completely right. Now he's essentially like a household name uh, because of his uh, leadership role, Um, and his brilliant scientific mind uh, in this pandemic that we're fighting against. And so it's very curious. Back then, much of the medicine world was already uh, very much in admiration of Dr. Fauci. And, you know, Shiv, it's so interesting because what Fauci was saying back then is essentially the same exact song he is saying now, that this world is at high risk of a potential pandemic and that there are so many infectious emerging diseases across the world. In fact, back then, already H1N1 had happened in 2009 and, and SARS uh, original had happened, you know, 2000 to 2003, around that time frame. And now he just, has, his message is being amplified and he is a, such a humble, soft-spoken, um, brilliant scientist. And those, those traits uh, are the same we're seeing uh, nowadays. What advice would you give to our audience of current and future healthcare professionals about meeting the challenges of this COVID moment and beyond? We need you. We need all of you. Um, And here's my stethoscope to the next generation. Literally, we need public health officials. We need public health officials, epidemiologists, infectious disease specialists, uh, people with MPHs and MPAs and MPPs. We need doctors. We need nurses, phlebotomists, techs. We need everyone. And so I think the message, the takeaway here, if anything, has been we need to double down on what it means to have a robust and, and durable healthcare workforce. And we need brilliant people. And I hope um, to everyone out there, the message would be like, take this moment and make something of it because we need you. We need you now, but we're going to need you for years to come. And that would be the take home message. Thanks for watching this preview of Raise the Line. To hear the full interview, check out all of our podcasts and subscribe to the series. Please go to osmosis.org forward slash Raise the Line podcast or listen wherever you get your podcasts.